Hey everybody, welcome back to 3 Day Weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in. If we haven't met already, I'm Chris, and I'm coming to you live from the pole barn. Uh, today is an exciting day because it is episode one of a brand new series I'm doing, and that is a cross-country trip across the U.S. Um, everything from picking out an RV, to making reservations, planning all the logistics of the trip, and then actually going on the trip. Family's really excited to do it, as am I. So step one, that's what we're doing today, laying the framework and picking out a motorhome. So let's do it. Episode one, the very first step, besides just waking up one day and thinking, hey, we should take a cross country camping trip see all the sights in one shot. But step one is picking out the rig to do it in. I did a ton of research, looked at a lot of used prices. Obviously we're gonna use, do a used motorhome, looking class A's, class C's, all that. Um, and contemplating, do I just take the fifth wheel that we already have, hauled by the truck. But uh, instead of doing any of that, I settled on this unit right here. This is a 2003 Fleetwood Bounder. It's a 36S and it is going to be perfect for this trip. It has a special frame under it, the workhorse frame, and it's powered by an 8.1 liter Chevy big block V8. Mm, tons of power. No Ford V10s for me. Big block V8. It has one big slide. It's got the dinette and a couch on it. Nothing really super fancy there. Uh, good size bed in the back. Tons of storage. I'll show you in just a minute. Um, but the main reason I picked this particular unit is it has a built-in washer and dryer and a double fridge. You really don't see that a lot in the motorhomes and you certainly don't see them a lot in a Class C. One of the reasons I wanted to go with a Class A. And price. The price of this machine compared to a similar equipped Class C, $10,000 less, easily. I don't know what it is about them. You get so much more for the money in a Class A than you do a Class C, but people seem to like the Class C, I don't know. We're doing it in a Class A, we're not messing around. Now you heard me say this is step one, is picking out a camper. Why is step one picking out a camper? Shouldn't step one be planning the trip? And I'll tell you why that isn't the case for me. Obviously, if I had a camper that I was gonna take yeah, okay, I know what I have, let's plan the trip. The problem is I didn't want to take the truck where the kids are going to be sitting in the back seat and, and us in the front seat for days on end. That's an awful lot of driving to just be sitting in the seat of a truck. And then when you get there, obviously, of the motorhome or the camper, but it's just so much sitting versus having the motorhome you're camping even though you're going down the road. It's a very different experience and it's a lot less tiresome than just sitting in the back of a truck. Because you can get up, you can kind of move around, she can make dinner, we can tag team driving because my wife will not drive my truck, it's a six speed. Uh, she just refuses to drive it, let alone drive it while towing a fifth wheel. Uh, not to mention, I don't think it's a good idea either. But she reluctantly agreed that she could drive this. And once you drive it, it's like driving a car. It's really, really easy. So step one, pick out your camping rig because you need to make reservations at campgrounds. We are a year out from the scheduled departure trip, which means it is time to start making reservations. And the only way to make a reservation is to know what rig you have. Now I know what rig I have. It's 37 feet long. I know what site I need to reserve for every campground that we're going in. Let me give you a quick tour. Go in right here. Watch your step. Oh, that's new and exciting for me. I've never had a motorhome, only a fifth wheel. So that's exciting. Hi, Sarge. He just hangs out in here. Here it is. Pretty awesome. So we've got two of my grandparents' recliners sitting up front seat here, and then another one with a desk that folds out, you know, so you can get all of your office work done. 
couch here that folds out to a bed. Standard dinette that folds down into a bed, like most do. Even bringing a kitchen sink with us. Stove, microwave, uh, vented hood, which opens the vent on the outside when you turn it on. Pretty cool, I like that. This is the main feature we were looking for right here. Built-in washer and dryer, all in one unit. It's not huge, but it'll wash clothes while I go down the road, hopefully. A very well-lit shelf to put knickknacks on. And this is the double fridge. Look at this thing. For a camper, that is pretty good size. And it works. Open the door, there's a light in there. I threw that bottle of water in there just to check the temperature later. And the freezer up top, it's split into two halves. This has an ice maker. Oh, and all the shelves, which sit in a cabinet down there, so we can put that in there. I just wanted to make sure it would freeze, which it did. So that works very well. Bathroom. Not too much to see in there. Got your toilet, privacy, sink, glass, surround, shower. You got a pocket door so you can close that, give you some privacy in here. Then you got the bedroom, another pocket door with a very surprisingly comfortable um, queen mattress there and a ton of storage all the way up through this TV pivots out. Someone already upgraded them all to LCD for me, so I don't have to. Storage under there. Storage in here. Came with a pair of crutches, which seem to be structural and hold up that bar. But then we found the bar that's supposed to hold up the bar, the bracket, and it looks like it just pulled out of the wall, so I can get some anchors and retire the crutches. Four drawers on each nightstand, cabinets over top of the bed. Tons of storage, plenty of space to keep uh, the whole family's clothing for three weeks. Shouldn't have any issues there. But then we come up front and we have the view. It's even better if the lights were on in the barn, but they shut off on a timer. Uh, ignore the fact that the stereo is pulled out. I couldn't get the stereo to work, and then I did get it to light up and it has power and everything, but I couldn't get any sound out of the speakers. There's one up there. One over here, there's two in the back. Um, there's a switch for speakers, but that didn't seem to matter. But it's an old, it has CD, but it's a tape deck. Not really my style, so I'm gonna replace it with a double din. Not this double din, but another double din, which does Android Auto, so I can have my navigation and everything right there. But this is the view. Uh, you'll have to trust me, it's even better with the lights on. This is the rear view camera, it's always on. Pretty standard over there. Heated power mirrors. A little button here so I can flash my parking lights at truckers to say thank you or you're all clear. Hydraulic leveling system. Headlights, overdrive button. A battery switch, so this will tie the house battery with the chassis battery in case one or the other is dead. I need to start the engine. Uh, it's got air conditioning up front. It's got all of your levels for your propane, your tanks and everything, individual fan switches, a light outside, that's the sound, and the generator, which only has 569 hours on it right now. Doesn't seem like a lot. I think my 2010 Raptor has more than that. And it doesn't say right now, but it has 50,000 miles on it. And there's my rear view camera, what it looks like in the dark. Oh, it's really bleached out on the camera. But trust me, it looks better than that. Co-captain's chair. This is going to be sweet. I've never owned a motorhome before, but so far, I like it. Sitting over here, I have a little green box. That is a pinion seal. I did notice when I was looking it over. There's a bad pinion seal down underneath. It is leaking slightly. Not terrible, but just a little bit. Certainly something we want to address right away. Uh, mechanically, the only other thing I'm worried about is the drive belt. It is squeaking. Not terrible, but I can hear it. 
So I'm going to put a new belt on it and then save the old belt as a spare as we go cross country. Um, and then I want to check the tires real well because it feels like one of them might be out of balance, but then it's okay. I know it's a little weird. Maybe it just needs to be driven a little bit more. So I'm going to take it on some test trips here pretty soon. Of course, when you're looking to get a used motorhome, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to check, and this goes for any camp or anything, is the roof. You gotta get up there and check for leaks or holes in the rubber roof. Um, I found two little spots where the sealant had kind of split open, so that was definitely gonna be an issue. I caught it soon enough that there does not, there's no rot, there's no water spots on the ceiling or anything like that. So I went up there first thing and sealed those up. I mean, obviously it's in the barn now, so it doesn't matter, but when we're outside, that could have been a major issue. So that's all sealed up, so you don't have to worry about it. Always, always, always check the roof. I can't show you because someone parked their trailer so close that it hits the tire. But down in here, let me turn on the light maybe. Oh yeah, there is a generator. It's an Onan 5500 Marquis Gold. Ooh, fancy which just happens to be uh, very similar to the generator in the fifth wheel. It's also 5,500, it's Cummins. Cummins bought out Onan, um, but yeah, it's up front. So same generator and it purrs like a kitten. Runs very, very well. Very pleased, very impressed. In the back, it does have a spare tire, which has never been used. All the lights, good condition. And it has the hitch, which is rated to tow. 5,000 pounds. Mm, that's kind of disappointing because I wanted to take all my fifth wheels on my 18 foot utility trailer, but I just went down and had that weight and it's 7,000 pounds. So I can't do that, but I'll do other things. The good news is a Jeep weighs 4,700 pounds or so. So it's plenty enough for hauling the Jeep around on a flat toe. And you wouldn't know this, but this is like old school gas behind there. It has a 75 gallon fuel tank. Whoo! Uh, and on the way home, it got 7.6 miles a gallon. So she's going to be thirsty. And the generator runs off the fuel tank. And the last thing I wanted to point out is storage on the outside. All of these are gigantic storage bins and it has them all down the other side as well. That is one reason I went with the Class A versus the Class C. The Class A is far cheaper than a Class C. Um, and you get, you get so much more, it's, it's gigantic. The Class C is more maneuverable, um, especially if you get under, I think 32 feet, a lot of campgrounds, especially the state parks won't let you camp in it unless you're under 32 feet. But we're gonna make our own reservations and we're gonna be stopping at some rest areas and everything. So I didn't care about it being 37 feet. Um, with one slide, that's all it has, this one right here, like I told you, nothing else, so don't need to worry about those. Has slide topper, awnings in good shape on the other side. Overall, it's, uh, it's ready to go, and I think it's gonna do the job great. It is 37 feet, but the wheelbase, it looks long because of Superview on a GoPro, but it's really not that bad. Turning radius is pretty impressive. The only thing you have to worry about is, here's the rear axle and all of that is behind the rear axle. So when you turn sharp, this swings out. You gotta be mindful that you're not gonna hit a gas pump or a car or something when you make a corner that sharp. Well, that's gonna do it for me today. Episode one, just kinda laying the framework, introduce you to the rig. You're gonna wanna subscribe. I have a ton of videos coming up in this series. We're gonna start doing some maintenance, some trip planning, route planning, stuff like that. Um, I already have a couple things in the works for you on that one, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate all of our viewers, all of our supporters, especially those super thanks. And we'll see you next time right here on Three Day Weekend.